Hi everyone, welcome to Nick's Diecast. Today I'll be giving you a look at and reviewing this 118 scale 1969 Ford Torino Talladega made by Maisto. So this is a pretty um, good model from Maisto. Um, it has unfortunately been discontinued. I'm not sure exactly when it was discontinued. Uh, it was in the last five years or so. Uh, but when Maisto was making this model, um, they made it in white, I believe, with either a beige or black interior, um, a dark red, and this really cool um, dark Oxford blue, which was made in very, um, very small numbers on the on, on the real Talladega in 1969. I think it was only a few hundred of these that were made. It's like the dark, it's like the dark metallic blue with the matte black hood. Really, really cool. Um, so yeah, since it has been discontinued, you won't be able to find it on certain websites. Um, if you look at sites such as eBay, you'll probably have luck on there. Um, and Maisto has brought back some other discontinued models um, for short runs at Sam's Club and, and BJ's and whatnot. Um, last summer, they brought back their 2000 Mustang Cobra for a short run at those places, and they brought back their Pontiac GTO convertible too for a few months. So. Maybe they'll do the same thing with this, and I hope they do, because it is a really cool model. Um, as far as, I don't know of any other 118 scale Ford Torino Talladegas from 1969 that are made aside from the Maisto version. Um, but once again, if you can get your hands on it for a decent price, I would say go for it, because um, it is a really good model overall. So we'll go ahead and get down to the details here. We'll begin up at the front with the headlights. Maisto, I would say, did a decent job with the headlights. There are pegs in each of them, but um, that would be where the light bulb is on the real headlights, so it's not really a big um, detraction from the detail or anything like that. Uh, the lenses have a nice texture to them, kind of like the actual um, headlight lenses. This grill here is solid. I kind of wish it was like a hollowed out grill with like mesh on it maybe, um, but this is a budget Maisto model, so it won't be like insanely detailed for the price that it was sold at. Um, this model has Alabama plates on it, part of Dixie, 61, 428. Um, that's a cool touch. I like it when they put license plates on, on their models. That, that's really cool. This Ford inscription up here um, is painted onto the matte black hood very well. Um, it's not three-dimensional or anything, but it's, um, it's centered very well, which is nice to see. Paint quality, I would say, is flawless overall. Um, this is an older model, so I did play with it as a kid, so there are spots that are you know, kind of scuffed up and whatnot. That's just from this car being played with um, when I was like five or six years old. Um, but Meister did a really good job with the Oxford blue color. Um, the metallic blue just looks beautiful, especially in, in, the, in the sunlight. And especially with this matte black hood, they did a nice job with the matte um, paint color. Um, there's no scuffs on here at all. It's a very high quality of paint, which is nice to see. And honestly, you can't really tell that it's a separate matte black hood if it's like in darker angles, which is kind of cool to see. But um, you can tell right now, especially in the sunlight, that it's a different color, which is really cool to see. Yeah, chrome quality is kind of shoddy. You can see that it's pretty much rubbed off completely on the wipers. Granted that I did move the wipers a lot when, when I was a kid. Um, so be careful with those, and they are a bit loose as well. That's just from playing with this model. There's also a small crack here. Um, and the rear view mirror did actually fall off. On, old, on older Maisto models, they just kind of like clipped the mirrors in place. They weren't glued on or anything, so they were kind of prone to falling off. So just watch out for that. Um, but the chrome bumpers actually stayed pretty nice o over the years, as well as the wheels. Speaking of the wheels, Maestro did a really good job with these rims. They look just like the rims on the real 1969 Torino. Um, you can't really see disc brakes or calipers because the spokes are so small. Um, but they look good, I, I would say, overall. And of course, you do have full suspension on all four wheels and really good steering, too. Now, these turn signals are just painted on, but at least mice have put like a silver border around it so it looks somewhat more realistic, but it would have been nice to see them do maybe separate lenses. Um, that would have added more detail. Pinstriping looks really good, aside from the scuff marks that I probably did it as a kid. Uh, they're painted on separately. They aren't stickers or anything like that. They're painted on nice and straight and center. They look really nice. Uh, I'm not sure if this border should be chrome or silver, but Maestro did a good job with it um, overall, as well as with these vents back here. There's a bit of a paint defect right there, um, but that's not too noticeable. They painted GT on top of the door, door handles there. Moving along to the rear of the model, Maestro again 
Um, the rear of the car is actually painted in the, in the same matte black as the front, uh, which is cool to see. The taillights are done in this like chrome plastic. It would have been nice to see them be maybe like actual lenses. So it does look a bit cheap and fake, especially up close. Uh, but it's not like a huge issue. And it's kind of hard to tell too. Um, this badge is very nice as a separate piece. The Ford inscription up here um, is also done well. The exhaust pipes could be better. They're just like thin pieces of chrome that are a bit loose. Uh, but again, my still doesn't really do exhausts in like really great detail, which is fine. They focus more on like the interior and exterior detail, which I think is better to focus on. In terms of opening features, we'll start back here with the trunk. Not much to see in there aside from dust, <laughs> of course. Um, there is a spare tire cover here, but no actual spare tire. It is the same size as, as the exterior wheels, which is nice to see. Um, there's no special texture in here or anything. It's not carpeted or anything like that. Uh, this doesn't stay open anymore because it is an older model. But that just, that just closes. I'd say fit and finish overall on the model is pretty good. There is a bit of a gap with this door here. You can see uh, where my finger is. But other than that, it's not really too um, noticeable. Moving along to the engine, I got to kind of flip the car because the hood is hard to open. Let me just give it a tap. There we go. Meister did a really nice job with this engine. Um, it's not just one solid piece. It's actually a three-dimensional uh, component. Uh, you can see all like the wiring and hoses and whatnot. And there's, there's even a fan down there too, it looks like. Uh, they did the battery. They did the main block. This is chrome on the real car, which is cool to see them do that on here. Uh, there's this blue component here. Not too sure what that is. Uh, but you can see all the way down to, uh, to the bottom of the car too. Most those muscle car engines in general, I think, are really well detailed, especially for, uh, for the price. And this, this is definitely no exception right here. So they did a really good job with, with this engine, I would say. There is actually a liner underneath this hood. It's like a plastic piece there. This hood doesn't stay up anymore. I don't think it ever did too, which is kind of um, disappointing. The is a bit loose, so I gotta watch out for that. Moving along to the interior, the doors open nice and wide on dog leg hinges. Door panel detail, I would say, um, is overall pretty good. Uh, Maestro did a nice leather pattern on them. They say Talladega in a really small inscription above this line here, which is a cool touch. Uh, they do the locks and the window winders nicely. Um, overall, pretty good. I don't think there's much to see on the real door panels anyway of the real um, Torino. The seats in here look really nice. Um, they look and feel like they're actual leather, which I love it when Maisto does that because it's like a really cool kind of extra extra feature if you like run your finger along there. Um, they do move a little bit. They don't fall down or anything like that. But that is a nice um, extra touch. Uh, dashboard, not too much to see there, but they really do a nice job with that leather pattern. You can see if I zoom in, it looks like actual leather too on, on the dashboard. The few buttons that are on this dashboard, they do color in them. They do color them them in um, in silver and whatnot. There's a radio in, in the center there. Uh, overall, it looks pretty good. Uh, the flooring has kind of a rougher texture. It's not carpeting, but at least they put in a texture that, that feels like carpeting. And it, it's just plastic. Let's close that door, moving along to this side. Steering wheel looks pretty good. There is, there is a split on the top there, you can see. And as far as I know, that's always been there. So I don't know if that was a factory defect or maybe I broke it like many years back and just forgot about it. Um, <laughs> doesn't look that great, but you know you can't really notice it unless you're looking right inside the car with, with the door open like you are now. The steering wheel actually does adjust a little bit, which is cool to see. It pushes in and out. Um, that's a nice extra feature. Most Mysos don't have that. These pedals down here, uh, they won't come silver on your model. I, I painted those silver, or rather I colored them in silver with a silver Sharpie. <laughs> um, just to kind of add an extra little bit of detail in here. Um, but yeah, overall this is a pretty, I would say, solid um, interior detail. Part of the dust, the, this, this model was in storage for a while. Um, I don't have the box for it, so I just kind of have it in, in open shelves in my closet when it's not being put on display. In terms of the undercarriage, Maestro did a decent job with the undercarriage. There is a bit of chrome fading on the exhaust system. Wish the exhaust system was maybe painted silver instead of done in, uh, in like chrome, but 
again, Maestro usually resorts to Chrome for their um, exhaust systems. But overall, this is a really good model um, for Maestro. If you're into 60s muscle cars, especially like Fords and whatnot, this would look really good with like uh, with like your with like Mustangs and Falcons and whatnot. Um, I display this with my Pontiac GTO and my Mustang and my Plymouth uh, Barracuda, and it looks really really cool with them. So if you can find this model on eBay or at a flea market or somewhere for a pretty good deal um, for a low price, I would say definitely go for it and, and buy it. As always, don't forget to subscribe and comment down below with any suggestions and what your thought and what your thoughts are on on this model in particular. Um, follow my Instagram, of course, at Nick's Diecast page. That's all one word with um, no spacing and all lowercase. And stay tuned for, for more um, videos, as always. Thanks for watching, guys.